Hello and welcome to Around the World in 8 Minutes where we bring you news from working class struggles and popular movements across the world. In our first story, we go to Argentina where thousands of people marched to the US Embassy in Buenos Aires protesting the United States intervention in Venezuela. The peaceful demonstrations were attacked by the police and many of the protesters were assaulted. This protest was part of the larger movement that has sprung up across the world in support of the Bolivarian Revolution and democratically elected President Nicolas Maduro. Mi nombre es Laura Capó, tengo parte de la Secretaría de Alba Movimientos. Nos encontramos acá en la Embajada de los Estados Unidos en la Ciudad Autónoma de Buenos Aires, en Argentina, en una marcha popular en rechazo a la intervención o al intento de intervención de los Estados Unidos en territorio venezolano. El pueblo de América Latina se une en Argentina, en Colombia, en cualquier lugar de América Latina para respaldar la soberanía del pueblo venezolano, para exigirle a los Estados Unidos de Norteamérica y también para exigirle a los gobiernos de América Latina que están al servicio del imperialismo, que cesen el intento de intervención en Venezuela, que Venezuela es un país libre y soberano que ganó las elecciones democráticamente y debe respetarse la elección del presidente Nicolás Maduro. Estamos desde Alba Movimientos en contra de cualquier tipo de intervención militar, llamada humanitaria, entre comillas, de cualquier orden, al pueblo libre de Venezuela. Demanding hands off Venezuela, people's movements and organizations across the world have condemned the imperialist attitude of the United States and the right-wing governments in Latin America. Recently, US President Donald Trump has threatened the use of military against the people of Venezuela if Maduro fails to comply with the US diktat. In January, Juan Guaido, leader of the National Assembly of Venezuela, declared himself the interim president of the country as part of the larger coup against Venezuela. His claim to the presidency has been supported by the US, Canada and other countries part of the Lima Group. This week, the European Union also called upon its member states to recognize Guaido as the interim president. Meanwhile, in Canada, women protesters interrupted the Lima Group's press conference in Ottawa on Monday with the slogan of Hands Off Venezuela. The protesters denounced the Lima Group's gathering in Canada to support the illegitimate presidency of Juan Guaido in Venezuela. Protesters also displayed a banner at the meeting which read, Canada and Organization of American States stop the plunder out of Venezuela. The Lima Group is the platform of conservative governments in Latin America which have been in the forefront of executing US-led regime change operations in Venezuela. The Lima Group meeting decided to include the illegitimate government of Juan Guaido in the platform as Venezuela's representative. For more information, we talked to Venezuela's ambassador to India, Augusto Montiel. The government of the United States have seized, they have taken our property, Venezuelan property. Seedgo Petroleum Company is a Venezuelan based, uh, sorry, a Venezuelan capital company. Uh, a group of refineries in the United States, also 6,000 petrol stations around the United States. They have seized all that which is valued at about twenty thousand million dollars and they are not uh, allowing the payment for our oil they are not allowing it to come to Venezuela they are also seizing uh, with the sanctions uh, government and state accounts around the world and they are taking these dollars that's why we have changed most of the um, accounts, public accounts to uh, euro accounts and it is not acceptable because what they are trying to do is in order to cripple the government of Venezuela and the Venezuelan economy and blame the government for that and use that pretext to tell the world that because of a failed economy which of course is not, is a result of their attacks, aggressions, sabotage and sanctions because of that then people should um, reject President Maduro and that is the only excuse they are using internationally but they are using with a big bombardment of lies of news as if really there existed an international legal criteria to say that the United States can decide who is the president in Venezuela and they then uh, train, pay, finance all these uh, um, violent and uh, terrorizing gangs from 
opposition, violent opposition parties in Venezuela, and they train one of them, and suddenly they say he is going to be the next president of Venezuela, and they claim he is the president, and they give him the instructions. But people in Venezuela are strongly, vibrantly supporting constitution and the right of Venezuelans to peace, the right of Venezuelans to desire for ourselves uh, our economic and our political future and we will not accept. Uh, surveys show that 89% of people in Venezuela do not want intervention, do not want violence, do not want any kind of external intervention. Only a, a small percentage of Miami goers and Disneyland people, they have their right, but if they want their president to come, they have to do politics, not terrorism. They have to go and use politics like President Chavez and President Maduro have done. So this is the result of a government outside Venezuela wanting to change government to change as they call it regime change because Venezuela is the largest reserve of oil so this is a war for oil they are making millions of families in Venezuela suffer because they want to secure the oil source for them thank you ambassador for talking to us on January 30th Randy Felix Malayo a peace consultant of the National Democratic Front of the Philippines was shot dead by unknown assailants the attack occurred at 2.30 a.m. when Malayo was on a bus ride in the Cagayan Valley. The National Democratic Front of the Philippines, or the NDF, is the political arm of the banned Communist Party of the Philippines. The Cagayan Valley branch of the NDF condemned the murder. They called the gunmen the death squad elements of the 5th Infantry Division of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. 49-year-old Malayo was one of the peace consultants that represented the communists in the peace talks with the government of President Rodrigo Duterte. He was one of the few prominent NDF activists who did not have any criminal charges against him at the time of the negotiations. This made him eligible to freely move within and outside the Philippines for peace negotiations. Even though the peace process has fallen apart with the Duterte government extending martial law in southern Philippines, Documents retrieved from Malayo by the police indicated that he was still recognized as a negotiator. He is reported to have held the immunity card issued under the joint agreement on safety and immunity between the NDF and the government, which was supposed to keep him immune from any actions by the police or the military. The Communist Party of Philippines and NDF alleged that the armed forces were behind the assassination, indicating the government's attitude towards reaching a peaceful resolution to the five-decade-long conflict. The lax attitude of the police in the investigation of the murder was also clear when two of the provincial police were transferred from their posting after concerns were raised over inconsistencies with the investigation. Rappler.com reported that Malayo had returned to the Kagayan Valley to take up people's issues after a distinguished career as a student activist and journalist. The NDF in their statement called him a tireless worker in the service of the people who was ever ready to present the side of the National Democratic Front in fora, seminars and consultations on the peace talks in the Philippines and overseas. That's all for this episode of Around the World in 8 Minutes. For more stories, visit our website peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. Yeah.